good day to everyone so in the last class we have seen the uh, the how to use the whole array operation and uh, uh, the array subsets how to use the array subsets as well as the using the allocatable arrays and the allocatable attribute to how to allocate the array during the compilation of the program or during running the program so in this class i am going to take i mean i am going to explain the intrinsic functions which is actually used in the arrays the different intrinsic functions using in the array in this class okay so the photon 90 has three different classes of intrinsic functions uh, used in the uh, program which is called the elemental intrinsic functions and the inquiry intrinsic function as well as the the transformational intrinsic functions the some of the intrinsic functions of each class are designed for use the ways with uh, array arguments so we can we can do, I mean, uh, see it one by one first we can see about the elemental intrinsic functions so this elemental intrinsic functions are functions that are specified for scalar arguments but which may also be used of which may be also used for the array arguments so if the argument of an ele elemental function is a scalar then the result of the function will be a scalar that means if you are using it for the variable then the the result uh, will be with the, the given resulting uh, result uh, output is also be a scalar variable or if the argument is uh, used with the function of array then the result will be also be a function of array okay with the shape of the corresponding input array uh, suppose if the function is has uh, uh, more than one input argument all of the arguments must have the same shape uh, suppose if an elemental function uh, is applied to an array the result will be a same as if the functions were applied to each element of the array by array array by I mean array element by element basis or by the whole array basis for example if you see the the example which is shown here where i have uh, having the array x which is having the value of 0 and the 3.141593 1 and 2 with the dimension of uh, I mean the, the array dimension is 4 then I have declared the another array which is called y which is also having the same uh, dimension then I can use the the whole array operation as y is equal to sine of x or I can use the element by element basis method to just allocating the values of the sine of x1 x2 I means x1 x2 x3 I am going to use the, the intrinsic function sine to find out the value of the sine sine value of the all the elements and stored it in the corresponding y okay so actually this is actually a small mistake here this is actually y of i which is equal to sine of xi or you can also use the whole array operation which is equal to y is equal to sine of x where uh, the, the the sine values of the all the four values will be stored in the another array y so the, the, the output of this uh, two statements will be the same it may take the sine value of first it takes the sine of zero and sine of 3.141593 and sine of 1 and as well as sine of 2 so all the values will be stored in the corresponding the array in the, uh, the elements of the y so as like uh, sine uh, sine of uh, intrinsic function you can also use the absolute cos tan on any trigonometry function or exponential function as well as the, the logarithmic intrinsic function and uh, the square root also you can use it in the in a elemental intrinsic functions okay so next we are going to see the intrinsic uh, inquiry intrinsic functions so the inquiry intrinsic functions are functions uh, the whose value depends on the properties of, a, of an object being investigated for example if the array having the uh, if the function unbound which we can see in here uh, is an inquiry function that returns the largest subscript of an array or the name of the array a yeah, list of the some of the common uh, uh, inquiry functions are given here so that with this the allocated which is already seen in the last class which uh, it will allocate the correspond the memory a uh, memory location or memory address for the corresponding array value so this is one of the intrinsic I mean uh, inquiry intrinsic function so these functions are usually uh, useful to determining the properties of an array for example if you find out if you want to find out the shape or extent or the the subscript range or everything you can you mean uh, find out using the corresponding intrinsic functions 
So the L bound, the, the low bound, lower bound, which will give you the, suppose if you are using this intrinsic function, then the lower bound of the corresponding array will be given, um, will be as a given as the output. Similarly, you can use the U bound, that means it will, give, it will give you, return the value of the upper bounds of the array. And similarly, you can, if you want to find out the shape of an array, then you can use the, at, uh, the function shape of the corresponding array name which will give you the shape of the array. Similarly, you can also find out the, what is the size of the array using the, the, the command size of an array. So, the dimension is actually the, 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 uh, the optional uh, uh, command. For example, if the uh, dimension is present in this array, then the, say, uh, then the, uh, if the dimension is present in the L bound, then it will uh, produce, it will give you the, all the lower bounds of the each and every dimension. Uh, suppose if the dimension is 1, then it is not defined, then it will give you the only one, the, it, will give, it will return the only one result, then the lower bound of the, the only one bound of the corresponding array. Similarly, the upper bound and the shape, suppose if the shape of the array, the dimension is given here, then it will always return the, of all the upper, all the size of, the whole size of the array with the corresponding dimension. So, I can explain this uh, inquiry intrinsic function with a simple example where I can just use the, uh, having the array with the uh, a size, I mean a name a, a, which is having the values, all the values are given, declared as zeros and uh, uh, this is actually a two dimensional array. So, the two dimensional array which will I will explain it in the after some time. So, this, uh, this is the, the first uh, dimension and this is the second dimension. The first dimension that means the, uh, the dimension and the rank as well as the, the row as well as the column which is having it is having the 10 by 10 uh, row as well as it is having it having the 10 by 10 columns and the two uh, the rows from 2 to 5 that means the values are the uh, the corresponding one first dimension is having minus 10 to 10 the elements having the values of minus 10 to 10 and the second dimension is having the values elements from starting from 2 and ending with the 5 ok. So, the dimension can be separated with the comma. So, I will ex just explain the two, um, I will explain this uh, uh, the operations of the two dimensional array when I taking the two dimensional array class. Just I just for the sim uh, example, I have used the, uh, the two dimensional array here ok. So, I am going to find out the shape, size and the lower bound and upper bound of the corresponding arrays. So, using the, the inquiry intrinsic functions, so just using the write the proper uh, uh, the words and I have used the shape, size as well as L bound as well as upper bound of the corresponding array and the output is properly given here. So, you can see that the shape of the array is 21, that means uh, the, uh, that means the total number of elements in the first dimension minus 10 to 10 is the 21 numbers and similarly the second dimension is having the four, uh, the second shape of the dimension is, I mean the shape of the, uh, the next dimension is four, that means the values of two, three, four and five is having the four, uh, the four elements that is given here is a four and minus 10 to 10 is given as a 21. The size of the array is nothing but the, the total elements available, uh, total elements of the array in the corresponding array so that you just multiply the values of 21 into 4. So, the total number of the total size of the array is 80, that is having the 84 numbers. Similarly, the upper bound, the lower bound is actually given as a minus 10 and it is 2 is the lower bound and upper bound is the 10 is the upper bound and the 5 is the upper bound of the second dimension. So, it is given the lower bounds as minus 10 and 2 and the upper bound as 10 and 5. So, this, how, this is how you can, you can use the inquiry intrinsic functions in your uh, arrays to find out the different properties of the array, ok. So, the next one is the transformation intrinsic, transformational intrinsic function. So, these functions have one or more array valued arguments or an array valued result. So, unlike the elemental functions, uh, the other intrinsic functions, uh, the, the transformational functions operate on the arrays as a whole. So, not just a element by element but it is a whole array. So, the output of the transformational function will often not have the same shape as the input argument. For example, suppose if you use a dot product then it will produce the vector product of the two arrays of the same size and produce the scalar output, ok. Ok. 
suppose the photon the, this photon having a many transformational intrinsic functions which is actually given in the and this uh, table so the uh, this is the sum of the intrinsic and sum of the transformational intrinsic functions given here but it is also having the photon have a, also having the uh, number of uh, intrinsic functions uh, uh, which is not actually the, the only the main uh, uh, mainly used or formerly used uh, the mainly used intrinsic functions are given here now for example if somebody is using the uh, a function name all with the mask the mask is nothing but the logical uh, uh, variable suppose it will give you the true or false kind of uh, uh, the logical decision which will give you the true or false type of uh, a result based on this the the function uh, the the the, uh, the function will be executed suppose if you are using the all then the logical function returns to true if all the values of an array is uh, the array mask is true and similarly you can use the any uh, the the function name any then the logical function returns the uh, true if any of the values any of the values in array um, this array mask is true this is nothing but the like a and and or statement which we are using the logical variables similarly you can also count the count you can also use the function name called count which will return the number of true elements in the array based on the 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 the, the mask the mask similarly you can also use the dot product of vector a and vector b that means uh, you, you can calculate the dot product of the two equal sized arrays and uh, the matrix multiplication you can also do it with the corresponding intrinsic function called matmul with the two different matrix matrix a and matrix b so which will perform the matrix multiplication and so with the same size of uh, with the same size or same shape similarly you can also find out the location of the maximum value the so, so so array is having at uh, different values you can find out the at which location the maximum number the, the maximum value is located which you can easily find out is this in the intrinsic function max log similarly the max value will return the the maximum value of the corresponding array with the different mask suppose the mask is default the, the mask is actually optional suppose if you are giving the mask ma optional the mask value or a mask uh, the mask is optional here so if suppose you are using the max val of an array it will return the maximum value of the corresponding array similarly the minimum and uh, minimum location and max minimum value will give you the corresponding value as well as the corresponding location of the uh, given array and uh, so this product of the array mask will calculate the product of the elements in the array for which the mask is true suppose if the mask is optional if the mask is not present then it calculates the product of all the elements in the array similarly you can use the reshape which is not given here that there are different uh, uh, intrinsic functions like uh, sum and uh, transpose uh, the product as well as the product is okay you can see that see in the i mean <coughs> the sum the array the function name called sum will actually calculate the sum of the each and every every element of the array suppose if the mask is present so again if the mask is uh, not present then it calculates the sum of the all the elements in the array and you can also calculate the transpose of the rank 2 array using the for uh, intrinsic function called transpose okay so these are all the different uh, some of the intrinsic functions used in the used uh, uh, in, in used in the array when is in the array so the the intrinsic function which you have seen here is given here in the elemental intrinsic functions and enquiry intrinsic function and transformation intrinsic functions given here are the main types of intrinsic function we we are using in the uh, our uh, day to day for photon programming but as you can also have a different uh, run uh, intrinsic functions you, you can use it in the photon so probably stop here and i will discuss about the i mean we can start about the two dimensional array in the uh, next class okay so suppose if you have any doubts we can again discuss it in the online class thank you